All right, I've been wanting to do this for quite some time. Uh, so this is just going to be a quick test to check how um, recording an actual GameCube goes. Like a legitimate 2004 GameCube. <laughs> just to see if this like desyncs badly or anything. I'm using the exact same setup I did with Sonic Colors. Um, about this time last... Yeah, this time last year actually. Uh, we've got... So I'm just resetting for the team that seems the coolest. Um, I'm just going to do a couple of these. Sorry, no actual story gameplay. <laughs> story gameplay. No actual story here. Um, just some quick battle now fights. Um, same setup where I've got it, um, an AV to HDMI converter. Except this time, um, due to how my room's set up and all that, and my desk is set up, I can have the GameCube nice and far away, so the fan is probably less likely to pick up. In theory. But I'm sure it will, no doubt. Um, let's see. I've been Graveler, Welmer. And you gotta go. Wait, hold on, hold on. The hell just got selected there. Um, so. Colosseum for the un uninitiated. This bad boy came out in 2004. It's a really good game. Um. Oh, um. Slight uh, trigger warning for any hardcore. Pokemon lovers, if you're terrified of hearing some someone say anything nice about Sword and Shield, click off the video right now. <laughs> You've been warned. Um, this is back in from 2004. It's a really cool game. Uh, the entire game is based around double battles. Something I really hope they do properly because, um, hey, we'll get to it straight away. Because um, I'm really happy with how Sword and Shield handled the Dragon Gym. I'm hoping we get more like that in the future, because that was one of the highlights of the game for me. Um, so, in the main game, you start off as an ex-member of the bad guy team, Cypher, you know, like Metal Gear, um, and you start off with, with an Espeon and Umbreon in their mid-twenties, yeah, like level 25, 24 I think it is, um, and you go around catching Shadow Pokemon. You know, who had their hearts, the doors to their hearts closed, like Kingdom Hearts or whatever. Really fun game. Um, apparently, people consider this one of the toughest Pokemon games, which, you know, it's not hard to be the toughest. Uh, there's only a limited amount of games that actually pose a challenge for the most part. And no, not the originals. They're only hard because they were janky and weird. And because stuff like Focus Energy was fucking broken it literally didn't do what it was meant to do um but yeah if we could get something like this in xd which is also a really good game i think i prefer this one uh, just because it was like the first even though xd is you know ease you could easily argue it's better um i i just really like to get one of these again in the future um now that there's considerable mechanical changes under the hood of these games back from Gen 3 when this came out. This came out the same year as Fire Red and Leaf Green uh, for remakes of Red and, uh, Red and Blue. Um, or Red and Green if you're Japanese, I guess. Um, and a lot's changed. On the surface, oh, what are you talking about? It's still a turn-based RPG. The special, uh, special physical split happened. Um, abilities have been dramatically expanded. You have dynamic speed changes. Um, mid-battle, which kind of happened in Gen 7, and mostly Sword and Shield. Um, there's a bunch of cool quality of life um, changes they've made over the years that I would really, really like uh, yeah, to see in a game centered around doubles. Because there's a lot of, lot of potential here for something cool. Now, I'm probably not paying enough attention. I potentially could get bodied, so let's hope I don't. Hit it with a rock. Oh, you son of a bitch. Alright. So the Smiggle's the shit, right? Alright, we can't hit Shimeko with that because, um, Levitate. Let's take you out. That'll take care of that. Um, yeah. I still really like Pokemon, so, you know. I was happy enough with Sword and Shield. It's what I wanted. And as someone who's not like hardcore competitive, but 
likes to breed competitive mons with perfect IVs, the right abilities, especially hidden abilities. Um, has a few flawless shinies through dumb luck, not trying. Um, Sword and Shield's really fucking good um, for that, because, oh, I'd like to go train something. Let's just go to the wild area and go catch, um, you know, a free 4 IV version of that Pokemon in a raid. Oh, let's just reset till we get hidden ability. Shit like that. Um, yeah, from a sheer quality, like, quality of life perspective, Sword and Shield's fucking amazing. In regards to content, though, I can understand why people have issues with it. But, yeah. Okay, we're going for the curse. I'm not really talking about what I'm doing here, because this battle feels pretty easy. I'm going to Helping Hand. Because, um, back in Gen 3, double battles were... Oh. Okay. That was weird. I think it's because they were trying to hit us. I missed the dialogue there. Back in Gen 3 is when doubles were first introduced. Um, and they had very rudimentary systems, like you'll notice here. Um, a Pokemon gets knocked out, you immediately switch one in so you can like double target something, basically. You can target to knock something out and then hit the next thing really hard. Which was super abusable in Ruby and Sapphire if you knew what you were doing, and knew the teams. Um, as opposed to like, you know, the modern games where it's like... Actually, I'm probably going to get knocked out with Gravel, so let's just take care of this now. Let's take out Chimeco, because fuck this thing. Why can't you beat good Chimeco? I know Envy used you on a cool stall team. Oh my fucking god. Envy used you on a cool stall team, but fuck you. I remember being so confused trying to find one of those back in the day. Um, in Mount Pyre. But yeah, uh, like right now, Plusle's coming out, it might get nailed or something, as opposed to Gen 4 onwards, where at the end of the turn, that's when they get switched in. Um, the, the, the mechanical difference in that regard was a really, uh, resulted in this really, really cool, um, what are they called? The battle CDs, like a little in-game test you can do, um, where if it was made for any game post-Coliseum, or post Gen 3, it wouldn't work. Uh, where you've got a KO a Shedinja, um, which can only be hit by s attacks that super affected, or status and weather, and then you have to kill the remaining uh, the remaining four in the back, <laughs> which is really neat because you just set up spikes with Cactus and then you use Sandstorm with Makago. For years, I used to think I had to nail them, um, nail them um, with. Um, with Sandstorm, uh, sorry, with Rock, rock Slide, but Sandstorm does the job. It's just because of, like, how weird the turn counter is, well, the, how weird turns are in this game. And, like, the order of all the, all the stuff that happens, I guess. Again, they've really cleaned it up over the, uh, previous five gens. Um, and yet, yeah, um, might as well mention, hey, the remakes are pretty good. I'm enjoying Sinnoh Nostalgia. The only problem is, oh cool, I'd like to um, I'd like to get to some breeding. I'd like to make some cool Pokemon. I've got a Mel Melotic and a Frostlass with perfect speed already. Uh, can I, oh. Oh yeah, this is going to be a real fucking slop without my totally legit shiny Ditto. Or um, or just having, I know the Poke Radar is meant to fill that niche, but for fuck's sake, it's a pain. This team was pretty interesting. Let's go for it. I might do a single battle, I'm not sure. Double's way more interesting. Um, because the AI really cheated me out earlier. Um, there was a Skarmory that used agility when my Bayonet missed Will-O-Wisp twice. That was fun. Um, Forret's got Follow Me, which is really handy. Again, very rudimentary start of double battles. Which has been the competitive format for quite some time now. Yeah, this... Weird sets, huh? If you're like hardcore competitive, like, these are weird. Um, let's just go survive because... Uh... Because mm, fuck it. Yeah, Survivor. Zangus and Survivor. So we've got Forret, Zatu, Zangus, Survivor. Um... 
Yeah. I just kind of wish Sword and Shield had all the Pokemon, because then, like... I think some of the criticism's a bit overblown for, um, towards it. A lot of it's fair enough, but, you know... Yeah, we get it. Ocarina of Time Tree. Chill. Those fucking wild area trees are so weird, because sometimes they look fucking fine. And other times they look really shit. Or at least one in particular. I, I don't know what the deal is. It's super weird. Um... This team, I remember trying against it yesterday. This might be a real pain in the ass. So we're gonna follow me in Calm Mind. I think this is what I did yesterday. Shadow Ball. Haha, <laughs> eat shit. I think they'll be going for an Ice Beam or whatever Celio's got. Aurora Beam, that's right. Is the AI smart enough to realize I'm gonna follow me again is the question. Because if I can get enough Calm Minds, I think we'll be good. Because I want to one-shot Celio. Ideally. Well, I, actually, Miltank's probably the one to go after. Now it's not smart enough. It, it hasn't figured it out. So the only problem is, I have to go for a third follow me. Um, so I'm not nailed by Shadow Ball. Because, um, yeah, this game's really weird for unlearning certain mechanics, like... What was it, um, yesterday I was using Wooper. I was looking at its moves and it's like, man, this thing's got such shit, uh, special attack, but it's got Ancient Power, Surf and Mud Shot, which are all special attacks post gen, uh, from gen four onwards. So I'm like, where's the physical, oh, that's right, Mud Shot, of course, and Ancient Power. Um, gonna hit me with an Aurora Beam, so Zangus is probably better to tank it, because it actually kind of has some bulk, unlike Sir Viper. Oh, and, um, yeah, Ruby, Ruby was my very first game, so, bias for Gen 3, the best Gen of Pokemon ever, clearly. Uh, it had the best games, it had Emerald, this, and XD. Fucking fight me, Black and White 2, what you got? Uh, unpopular Pokemon opinion time. Hot Gold, Soul Silver, really good. Um, eh. They're fine. I like them, but... Something about how the boxes work just shits me big time. I don't know what it is. That entire gen was super weird with that stuff. Diamond and Pearl weren't great with it. Platinum was a bit better for memory. But something about Hot Gold and Soul Silver, it's been so long, I can't describe it. But just how the boxes operate is, feels so fucking awful. I, I know it's got... I know it's got Johto and Kanto, and it's objectively the best. You know, its level curve is great. There was nothing to fix there. Level 28 Doduo outside of the Elite Four. Yeah, no, flawless game. You know, um, Johto Bros never, never lose. Astounding gem. Man, Hoenn is shit, isn't it? Well, at least we have a fucking level curve in Hoenn. Oh boy. If this is just me rambling about about random Pokemon shit, because I've had nowhere to do this for like two years. Back in Bloodborne, where I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll LP Sword and Shield. I mean, I still could, but I don't know if it's... Definitely not the type of game suitable for an LP, because hit the wild area, which I did day one, obviously, and um, I think it was about two or three hours later, I'm like, oh yeah, I should probably progress now. I spent all this time catching everything. You know, one of the core features of a Pokemon game. Man, the audacity of Sword and Shield to have this giant open area with like, 100 to 200 Pokemon available right at the start. God, what an awful game. <laughs> oh boy, I'm hoping no hardcore Pokemon fanbase finds this or I'm fucked. I'm completely s oh yeah, yeah yeah we're going to Steam. I'm completely screwed. Ah oh, boy. Um, another core feature of the game. Um, this came out when there was Ruby and Sapphire, um, and nothing else. Now due to how the games worked previously, they had to have a complete mechanical overhaul. 
which they managed to kind of fix, well, they managed to deal with later on, um, with the virtual console releases of um, the first two gems. But basically, sorry, just one sec, I have to plan this ahead of time. Uh-huh. If I have Skarmory, I'm screwed, I think. So I need Entei or Raikou, Raikou for this. Hmm. Whoops. I know I selected, but it was probably Salamence. No, 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 cancel, please. You hear that? That's how you know I'm recording on a GameCube. I really want to use Salamence. So I'm going to use Salamence. Um, sorry, I've completely, completely lost my train of thought, but I want to get this right. I'm thinking Donphan... Donphan's going to be a liability, but I really, really want to go with it. Uh, I've got nothing to deal with Swampert, which is a real fucking problem. Uh, oh. eh, Entei, fuck it, why not? We can just solo sunny, bang, uh, sunny Day Solar Beam, right? Yeah, Sunny Beam, sure. Uh, let's go... Raikou for the Reflect. And... Let's just go Suicune, fuck it. What a boring team. Salamence and the three legendary dogs, or beasts, or whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah, no, I've completely lost my train of thought now, sorry. I, I'd just love there to be another game centered around doubles. Especially given they've given it so much attention over the last decade or so. Um, oh, and while I'm just thinking of it, uh, Dynamax is fine. It's just, it's it's Megas and uh, Z moves, Z moves just toned down a tad and then merged together. Like, the Me Megas are really sick. The main problem is a lot of the pop uh, popular Pokemon that clearly didn't need them got Megas. When what it should have really been was a bunch of the weaker ones got nerfed immediately. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, the weaker ones got something like right away um because as much as I, I'm like oh man Flygon never got one even though they really wanted to, to give it one and stuff like my, my logic Pokemon I really like um they didn't need them as much as stuff like Venomoth for example which I know has utilities for the Dancer and Baton Pass which is really sick fuck you Smogon for not letting you letting us do that not that I play online oh oh well, this is gonna hurt I was predicting this, but we have the bulk. Yes, good. Um, but there's so many crappy Pokemon that I say crappy like very honestly. Um, there's so many Pokemon that really could have used um, Megas before what actually got them, I guess. Because, um, like, you know, like controversial opinion Charizard didn't need them. I mean, technically it did, because Stealth Rock completely bummed it. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess the Kanto ones in retrospect did need them. But... There's still Pokemon that need them way more. I don't think Garchomp or Selenence needed them. Or Metagross. Or Pokemon I really do like. I don't think they fucking needed Negas. Um, it's just a shame. And Z moves were, like, conceptually really cool. But also quite broken from what I heard in regards to competitive, because it's like, oh, um, oh, I've got nothing to hit this, uh, this counter. Oh, well, cool, um, here's hidden power with the corrected Z move crystal, and now I can just blow through my counter. Oh man, hidden power is such a fucking weird thing. I'm happy they did away with it, but only because I'm cool with, like, the variety of TMs they gave us in Sword and Shield. So a lot of Pokemon that lost it, like what, Sylveon and Tuck, um, Sylveon, who's a notable one? <sighs> there are a couple of areas that got Mystical Fire, El Creme's one too, from memory. Well, this fight's gone really one-sided. Sick. Um, like, I'm just really happy with the amount of, um, TMs they gave us in Sword and Shield that act as, like, pseudo-hidden power coverage. That's another thing. I, I really do like the TMTR system. I reckon it's the best way to do it. And poor us, we suddenly have 200 TMs effectively. That's fucking awful, isn't it? 
Um, I'm I'm okay with how Diamond and Pearl uh, the Diamond and Pearl remakes went back to the old ways, but I'd kind of prefer the new system going forward. I don't know. Okay, I think maybe one more. I've rambled on long enough. Uh, let's see. Easy's the babies. Alright, let's have a look at singles. Yeah, I'm on board with this game. I like this. It's got some really cool ones. Ariyama's always cool. Again, Hoenn Bias. What do you expect? It's funny how some... Well, yeah, again. <laughs> eat shit, Johto. Some of your Pokemon are more Hoenn Pokemon than Johto Pokemon. Boy, I sure do love having Slugma after the fifth, uh, after the third gym, as opposed to being locked in Kanto, and having Skarmory a bit after that, actually, like on the next route. This is the Skarmory that avoided my shit. This specific one. Doesn't have fucking Bright Powder or anything, but holy crap. Um, they don't have a Ghost, so the Machamp could be useful. Uh, Hariyama. Oh, that's interesting. It seems like a better double set, but there's actually a really good Hariyama in this, um, in the doubles, um, ultimate version. Or in the double teams. Where it's actually a super, super good support. Um, let's look at the team. What's the team comp? I kind of need Craterly, I think, for Golem, because that's going to be a problem. And that can just sit there and laugh. I've only got 10 attacks, but fuck him. Um, Alright, let's go Metagross. Let's go. I really want Hairy Armor, but I, I'm not brave enough. Rhydon could be good, but it's slow as fuck. Matt Jam's not really good against anything, so Rhydon and Craterly, I guess. Yeah, screw it. Alright, I'm gonna lose this one. Confirmed. Man, having Craterly with Storm Drain in this would be sick. Like, that's the thing, just all the abilities have added in fi the five gens in between that are incredibly good for doubles. Like, having Pikachu with Lightning Rod and Cradley and um, Gastrodon with Storm Drain. Shit like that. And if Torkoal had Drought right now, I'd be fucking terrified. In fact, I should be incredibly worried because that thing's going to fucking nuke me, isn't it? Alright, um... Let's see. We're going to be neutral to it. Impish nature, huh? Oh, great, that's what I want to see. Yeah, I want to see impish nature. Um, what are we looking for? 112.50. We resist it. I guess we can... What's the best way to do this? Yeah, no, right on's the way to go. Because I'll, I'll at least hurt this thing more than Crater League can. And I'll at least resist the hit. I genuinely... Oh, Heatwave, sick. I genuinely love to do a playthrough of the story mode, but it's a 20-hour turn-based RPG. I'm not doing it without a co-pilot. That's not a hint in to any of my mates who are watching this, by the way. But, uh, hey, maybe. <laughs> once, once the COVID shenanigans are over, maybe. Okay, yeah, this is the problem. Um... Metagross, I guess, is the way to go. Man, Storm Drain would be sick right now, wouldn't it? Water immunity and gain special attack boosts. Yeah, that'd be sick. This is still gonna hurt. Tentacruel's not especially strong, but... This will still do some... Mm, yeah, uh, about 50 damage. Um... Alright, now here's the question. You've got fucking godlike special defense, right? So, what have we got? I think no matter what, it's probably still better to just go for Psychic. So we'll just click Psychic. Yeah, Barrier. There we go. Vindicated immediately. I knew you'd go for that shit. Still shocked me how fucking agility, um, <laughs> agility Skarmory swept me. Because both, yeah, what I failed to say was both Willow Wisp miss, right? For anyone who, out of a no. Um, burning something halves its normal attack stat, not the special attack. Um, and then Blaziken came out, survived with 11 HP from the Drill Peck, and then missed Blaze Kick. 
yeah, I was very fucking salty. Um, thankfully we had, um, we had quick attack, you know, in case it had Gen 5 onwards sturdy. But, uh, no need to worry about that here. Oh, this is gonna hurt, but we're dead. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, so, um... Oh, that's alright, you're not meant to have Shadow Ball now, are you? Yeah, I think Mark couldn't get it till now. I think I was just reading that last night, actually. Um... Hmm. Yeah, this is back when uh, Steel resisted Dark and Ghost. So that's another thing. Sure was weird having Gramble not be a fairy type. <laughs> Alright, I think we're done here. This is about half an hour of this shit. I'm happy with this. Alright, and yeah, the names are weird. Hey, Kruik, or however, however the hell you pronounce that. Actually, just for shits and gigs, let's have a look. Yeah, so we've got some interesting teams. I, I aesthetically really like this team. Heracross is awesome. I've got a soft spot for Wobbuffet. Do Dodrio is pretty rad. Cacturn I actually really, really like. Again, Hoenn bias. Just wish it was better. Um, Melotrix, like, my favorite water type. Yeah, yeah, Walrein's right behind it. <laughs> um, and Sableye, I really fu Ah, yeah, fuck it, let's go. I like this team too much. If only we had Prankster. If only we had Prankster Sableye. Oh shit. It's this team. Mmm. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a tough one. All right, um, all right, endure reversal. You won't have Salak Berry because I don't think any of these have held items. Uh, I don't know what your game plan is. I see your game plan. I don't think it's gonna work. Melodic solid. If only you had Willow Wisp instead. I do need something to deal with Espeon, um, so maybe carry you in the back. And this is back when Sableye and Spiritomb had no weakness. <laughs> Just like Killer Queen. Alright, um, let's go for an awful combination of Heracross, Sableye, and Melodic. Ghost Dark has no weakness. And then Fairy types, so you know. It's weird how Fairy types are kind of overpowered in a way, just by sheer fact of... They're just really good. It's, it's not even like they're good against dragons and they completely screw them over. It's the fact that it's like... Oh, yeah, oh yeah, here we go. I chose right. Now, I don't think the AI is good enough to predict my switch into Sableye, so I think we're okay. But before we do that, let's just have a quick look. Adamant. Adamant, Adamant. Modest. Okay, these natures are fine. Why this isn't a defensive one, I don't know, but whatever. Um, the fuck was I saying? Oh well. Um, the animations in this game are pretty sick too. Oh, okay, you can hit me with this, but your attack stat isn't high. Um, Espeon, second favorite Pokemon. Um, tied first is Blaziken, because no shit, it was my first Pokemon. Um, and Incineroar, actually. Fucking Chad Cat of VGC. Uh, Pikachu's number three. Not because of the anime per se, but yes, because of the anime. Um, honestly, at this point, more because of Smash Bros. Because I just, I really, really like playing Pikachu and Smash Bros. Alright, let's just go for a Shadow Ball. This is going to hit us really hard. This will let us see if it's got anything from Melotic. Okay, that's fine. Ah, oh, we didn't get to see its walk back animation. Damn. Sableye's got a good one. I should have just switched from Melotic. I really should have done that. Um, Alright, let's just go for a surf. Quick attack, okay. Ooh, that looked a little janky though, didn't it? Like... I know Japanese companies can be a little proud in terms of, like, asking others for help, but... Oh, it's... 
I don't get why Game Freak don't just get another external... Apparently they had an external company help with the models in Sword and Shield. Okay, uh, this is going to be an awkward one, so I'd rather just switch, but... I think we're just going to have to 1v1 the uh, Feral Gate for a bit. So let's use Attract to hex it out. Apparently they had an external company work on the models for Sword and Shield. It's maybe animations, I'm not sure. Yeah, damn straight, you get immobilized. Um, could go for Ice Beam, but I'm not chancing a freeze. I'd rather just hit it as hard as I can than have Heracross to clean it up. Not like you've got a lot of special bulk. I do have Recover. Yeah, um, sorry, I'll actually finish my thought this time. They had some extra help with Sword and Shield with the models and maybe animations, I'm not sure. Um, I don't get why they don't just ask a... Just have another company, another, like, in-house Nintendo group help them out with that. Um, Legends Arceus looks Arceus, whatever the hell that uh, looks pretty neat. But I, I'm one of those weirdos that's kind of like, does Pokemon need to go open world? It looks cool. But I don't know. I, I know it's not going to be proper open world per se, but... I don't know. But even then, like, if you were going to do that, get Monolith Soft to help, for fuck's sake. They did with Breath of the Wild, and all three Xenoblades are really fucking good games in terms of... Well, I can only speak for X, because it's the only, only one I've played. But I've only heard good things about one, um, in terms of like the world, bar there being some cut content, which apparently you can still access if you know what you're doing. I think through emulation, but um, and I haven't heard anything bad about two, but like they with Breath of the Wild for fuck's sake, get them to help with the map. Um, anyway, finishing thoughts. I was just gonna say I'm also one of those weirdos. It's like, does Pokemon actually need voice acting? If it, if you had voice acting, oh yeah, here's the other intros, by the way. Um, Hoenn best starter trio, just saying. Um, I'll just cycle through this one finishing. I'd rather, if they were going to do, uh, have VA, I'd rather they go, like, the Persona route, where they have maybe some cutscenes with voice dialogue, and then, like, minimal dialogue or no dialogue for text outside of that. Yeah, um... You can tell which pair of models had a bit more work put into them. Yes, main character and friend on the left. Not Brendan and May. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think Pokemon needs VA. I don't think it needs to go open world. Just have like... I think Sword and Shield could be a really good stepping stone to something awesome. And I'm hoping that's what they do in the end, because it kind of looks like Legends is that to a degree. Um, yeah. I don't know. This is kind of a limp way to end it on, but I don't want to do another fight at the risk of losing. So let's just cycle through teams and see if we see anything sick. Like that one. That's pretty neat. Where's that rain team? I want to get that on... Yeah, that's the one I beat. Where's the rain team? I want to get that on camera. That hairy arm is really fucking good. Fake out, helping hand, and what else? He had seismic toss, and, um... I can't remember. Maybe protect? Really solid. Helped me a big time. Sandstorm team. Oh yeah, didn't he? I barely touched on the weather despite opening with that. Um, yeah. Weather mechanics have changed a lot. We don't have infinite weather anymore. Yeah, this right here. This is very, very reminiscent of one of the bosses in the game. Um, this is the start of, like, the whole having abilities centered around doubles. Because Magnetric and Rhydon block the electric attacks um, from Gyarados and Mantine. But keep in mind, this is Gen 3, so Magnetric doesn't absorb it, it still takes damage. Um, Rhydon, amazingly, despite the fact you'll aim for the horn, does not take damage. Alright, that's a shitty anime reference, I'm out. Fuck this. Pokemon's still pretty good. So for that. Maybe I'll come back to this one day? I don't know. Anyway, end of this nice screen. Um, two best evolutions, by the way. Right there. Alright, now fuck this, I'm out. I've got to do Astral Chain after this. Bye.